As people across this country protest for the civil rights of young black men and boys like Trayvon Martin, thousands of them in the streets today, it's a righteous cause for sure. But what is, or at least has been, virtually ignored in the big stage uh, until very, very recently is a far greater peril that we've been talking about, the peril facing the community in cities like New Orleans and Detroit and Newark and Cleveland and Chicago. Craig now investigates the hurricane of black-on-black -black violence in the Windy City, where so far this year, 150 young black men and 21 young black women have been killed by other black people. As protesters join justice for Trevon rallies around the country, community activists here in Chicago, where carnage is a daily occurrence, ask, where is the national outrage for black-on-black -black violence? We saw her put in an ambulance, but we didn't see her face or nothing. Just minutes before, she was just playing, riding her bicycle. Yeah, and then she, saw, she really got shot. And then, she, then all the police and the ambulance came. You scared? Yes, I am. A tragic but all too typical Friday night as shots ring out across Chicago. Two men killed, seven others wounded, including a six-year-old girl as neighbors, including young children, watch in horror. I want to grow up and be a scientist, but I don't want people to die real quickly in the ways. And I feel ba real bad for her. Him seeing all this, his dream's not going to come true if people keep shooting kids. It's not. It's not. It's sad. It's real sad. Part of the tragedy of the violence here in Chicago is the collateral damage. Tonight, a six-year-old girl who was partying right in front of her home, riding her bicycle, was shot in the chest and gravely wounded, despite law enforcement on almost every corner in this neighborhood. It's very tragic that Trayvon Martin lost his life, and, 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 and we, we, we're sorry for his parents. We're sorry for... Uh, his brother and, and all of his relatives and friends, but in Chicago, uh, this happens on a consistent basis. Every single day, uh, these young guys are dealing with death. Uh, every one of them have, have had friends, family members that have died, and the attention and awareness uh, that we're is is not there and it needs to be because that's the only way we're going to solve this issue solve this problem pastor Corey brooks is founder of the new beginnings church on chicago's south side where urban violence is almost a daily occurrence he wants outrage over trevon's verdict to focus on the out of control violence in chicago where murders topped 500 last year and the grim reaper's toll touches every family. People died right here, like literally right here on this curve, right here. I ain't seen not a news camera at all. How many of you know someone who was shot or killed here? We all, we all, know. Like, we all know the same people. We all saw homeboys to this street stuff. We did. Four, five. How old are they? All age, uh, 19, 20. I see you have uh, R.A.P. Who is that? That's my little brother. His name is LeVary, but you know I called him Ra Ra. He was shot? Yeah, he was shot one time in the chest. He died. This right here is my friend Tony. Tony Dunn, but he got killed right here. It upsets you that Trevon gets a lot of attention when you have all these people on your body represented? It's, uh, it was an incident that occurred, and it happened. It happens every day in Chicago, though. So. I feel like it's just, he's just getting a little bit too much attention from me. My son got killed out here. Your son? He just didn't make the news. Yeah. What do you think of that? What can you say? Why? I mean, you know why. Black and white. Son was dead. If your son was white, it would have gotten more attention? Yeah. A, a white boy getting killed on 61st Street? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We got a lot of attention. The belief that Trevon was profiled by George Zimmerman because he was black has fueled calls for federal hate crimes charges. Pastor Brooks is planning his own march named Let Us Live next Saturday to bring attention to what he calls a human rights crisis in the Windy City. His logo transposes faces of Chicago's victims over Trevon's profile. So how do you give these folks hope? Well, we got to keep believing, first of all, and we got to keep working, you know. I think a lot of times the reason why they don't have any hope is because they don't have anyone who is showing them uh, that they care. And I think if you show people you care and you work like you care, then ultimately uh, love is going to win out and hope is going to win out. But we just got to keep doing it and we can't let up. 
With streets so deadly, they go by names of Bucket of Blood and Death Row. Tonight here on the south side of Chicago, a six-year-old girl was shot and gravely wounded during a firefight between gang members. It's part of the violence that goes unchecked here. Geraldo, back to you. Craig, thanks. Continuing with Rod Wheeler, former DC, uh, DC homicide detective, Ted Williams, former cop lawyer and Fox News contributor, and Niger Innes of the Congress of Racial Equality. All right, gentlemen, what about the federal hate crimes charges? What about what you just saw from Craig's report in Chicago? Rod, you first. Well, I think uh, this should be looked at from a federal uh, perspective in terms of hate crimes. I'm not sure, though, if it's enough to even get that. But I will say this much, Geraldo. If the president is watching right now and members of Congress, including our Republicans and Democrats, if they really want to have an effect on what we just saw, create jobs for people. I mean, look, I was out there in the streets just today with a group of young African-American men, and all I continued to hear was, we need jobs. Create jobs for people. Let's balance our criminal justice system. Them, give people the education they need to make the money they need to make, and you will see a difference in the crime rate in all communities, not just in the African-American community. Ted, have at it. Your final thoughts. Craig, 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 you did a wonderful story. This story, if it's some kind of way, Geraldo, you can get this story to the President of the United States. I think you should. Craig did an excellent job. And did you see that young girl, that young child, who was mm -hmm. given an interview by Craig. Look, the bottom line is when you kill a snake, you go to the head. The president of the United States of America needs to get more engaged. I'm most happy that he spoke out about Trayvon, mm -hmm. but when you've got death like this going on in Chicago, daily, 40 some people killed in a night, a six year old child hurt. Somebody has got to get involved. It's got to come from the top. It has to come from the president of the United States. Uh, Niger, your final thoughts. I can't add to what these gentlemen said except say amen. They're dead on target. I mean, if I were to add anything, I would say we also have to examine what I call the entertainment industrial complex and the hip hop industry mm -hmm. and its projection of yep. young black men and the images of who young black men are. They Agreed. are creating negative role models for young black men that are often in homes where their mama is out working two and three jobs. The father might not be around so they turn on BET they turn on MTV and they find 